1980s and then an actual population decline in the most recent decades. This has implications for Michigan. Uh, for one thing, it means that we have fewer representatives in Congress. Uh, the size of Congress was established in 1911, and at that time, Michigan had 13 representatives in Congress. We grew, particularly in the 1930s, and Michigan reached a maximum of 19 representatives in Congress from 1962 through 1982. Every subsequent census has cost Michigan one representative in Congress. So this census will reduce Michigan's representation to 18 uh, members of Congress rather than the uh, former number that we had, a maximum of 19. I guess I wanted to show that slide all day long. <laughs> okay. How about this one? Does this one work? No. Nope. Oh, okay. I don't know exactly what I did. That's. Uh, <laughs> Ah, there, okay, I think I know where I'm going. This is Michigan's share of the total population, and this is the number of representatives in Michigan. I'm back on track, thank goodness. Ah, uh, and uh, this is Michigan's rank. Uh, how many states are above Michigan in terms of population size? Uh, we used to be the seventh largest state. We are now the eighth largest state, and very soon Georgia and North Carolina, sometime in the next few years, will uh, surpass Michigan in population size. Uh, Pardon? If you click, this one goes back, this one goes back. Which one? Up here? Okay. I'm sorry, I should have practiced this a great deal more. Okay. Uh, See the arrows right here. Okay, okay. Uh, let me get back to uh, where I was going before. Uh, the population of any state grows or declines because of the difference between births and deaths and the amount of immigration from abroad or immigration from other parts of the United States. Michigan is a state with slightly below average fertility. We're not far below the national average. What I've shown here are those states that have the highest birth rates uh, these are births per thousand women and the rural states, Idaho, Nebraska, Alaska, but you'll know not Utah because Utah's population is rapidly changing, have relatively high fertility. In this uh, table and in several others, I've compared Michigan to the other Big Ten states, and Michigan actually has the lowest fertility rate of any of the Big Ten states. We have birth rates that suggest about two children per woman, roughly replacement level fertility in the United States. And in the New England areas, the second demographic transition is complete, that is late age marriage, low fertility, low divorce, and those states have extremely low, uh, extremely low birth rates. If we look at mortality, Back to where I was before. Now, births. Now I want to go the other way. I got it, I think. Uh, death rates in Michigan are a little bit higher than the national average. We don't often pay very much attention to this, but there are considerable differences from one state to another in the United States in the level of mortality. Actually, in Hawaii now, the death rates suggest a lifespan about three years longer than the lifespan in Michigan. Michigan has, has somewhat higher death rates than the entire United States, uh, but the states with very high death rates are Mississippi and West Virginia. The a situation in Michigan, we had a maximum of about 200,000 births back at the peak of the baby boom in 1960. 
number of births has steadily declined, and we're at about 117,000 births now. Numbers of deaths have gone up in Michigan and will continue to go up in Michigan. Natural increase is the difference between the number of births and the number of deaths. And at our maximum, we were adding about 75,000 people a year to Michigan as a surplus of births over deaths. That has changed, and we're down to something on the order of uh, 30,000 a year increase in population, thanks to births being more numerous than deaths. Uh, for the most part, the size of a state is strongly influenced by either immigration from abroad or net internal migration, that is the exchange of migrants with other states. And Michigan uh, experienced a very, very large loss of individuals to other states in the early 1980s. Some of you remember Michigan at that time and the very painful processes that went on and uh, cutbacks in Michigan because of the uh, economic changes occurring in the early 1980s. By the end of the 1980s, into the 90s, Michigan uh, did a little bit better, losing some individuals every year. But then in this most recent decade, Michigan once again resumed losing on the exchange. Of course, some people moved to Michigan, others moved away from Michigan. There was a net loss, a very large net loss, more than 100,000 in 2008. My colleague Bill Fry says that the current recession is one that discourages most people from moving anywhere. So the loss of people to other states from Michigan may slow down. It used to be you could leave and think you're going to get a job in a construction industry in Las Vegas or Texas, and that's no longer the case. So uh, the loss is not uh, maybe tampering a bit. But generally, Michigan has been losing population to other states on this uh, exchange. Uh, there is one other key component of uh, migration, uh, international migration. If you had to explain why Florida went from 15 seats in Congress in 1970 to 26 at present, or why Cal California went from 38 seats 30 years ago to 53 seats at present, you'd point both to internal migration and to international migration. International migration has more or less dampened the loss of congressional seats in New Jersey and New York, states that are losing a lot of internal migrants to other states. Immigration from abroad has not been a major component of population growth in Michigan, uh, frankly, the only two places in the Midwest that have gotten lots of immigrants in recent years are the Chicago and Minneapolis metropolitan area. Sure, there are immigrants coming into Michigan, and about 2% of the people in Michigan have arrived from abroad in the last uh, 15 years. Mexico, India, China, Iraq, and Canada are the leading sending countries, but basically, the immigration boom that stimulated so much growth in various parts of the country has not influenced Michigan very much. We're just not a destination point for immigrants coming to the United States. Uh, I think I have got a map uh, showing percent change by counties, and it indicates in bright green those three counties in Michigan that grew in the last decade more rapidly than the entire nation. Livingston, which is well positioned between uh, Lansing, Detroit, and Ann Arbor. Ottawa County, uh, to the west of Kent County. And Grand Traverse County, the retirement uh, and recreation county in the north. The bright red on this map shows counties that lost 3% or more of their population. And that includes Wayne County, all of the Thumb counties, uh, all or most of the counties on the Sunrise Coast, and more than half of the counties in the Upper Peninsula. So there's a very pervasive pattern of very slow growth in Michigan or population decline. There are a number of counties and areas that have increased, but they are, they're outranked by those that have lost population. The Census Bureau and OMB are giving us a new set of metropolitan areas that are not necessarily familiar to us with the uh, census of 2010. 
And this shows population change in those metropolitan areas, the new set of metropolitan areas in the last decade. Holland Grand Haven is the only one that grew more rapidly than the national average. Ann Arbor, Grand Rapids grew somewhat. Lansing grew about 4%. And then uh, very several of our metropolitan areas, Bay City, Flint, Niles, Detroit, and Saginaw, lost population. And you can see that uh, the entire United States, except Michigan, grew by more than 10%. And there was only one metropolitan area that grew that rapidly in uh, the state of Michigan. The first decade of the century was a brutal one for Michigan in terms of economic trends. You don't need someone to tell you that. If you look at the Bureau of Labor Statistics numbers on the number of people employed in Michigan, we were up at about 4.6 million when the census of 2010 was taken. Bureau of Labor Statistics suggest we lost about 700 and 80,000 non-farm jobs in the state of Michigan. That is perhaps 17% of the state's non-farm jobs disappeared in the first decade of this century. Any explanation of demographic trends has got to be linked to job trends. People are not going to stay in an area or move to an area if there is a dearth of jobs. It is necessary, I think, to be uh, frank about looking at what is happening in Michigan with regard to jobs. And one very discouraging trait that, or finding that's shown there. For the United States, after about 2004, jobs were expanding across the nation uh, and at a moderately high rate. But they were not increasing in Michigan. They were falling steadily. So the economic prosperity that characterized some other areas of the country before 2008 did not characterize Michigan. Michigan has uh, fallen behind in retaining and creating jobs. One useful way to look at job information is to use the census data from the American Community Survey, which replaced the long form. And this classifies workers into industries. That is, what is it that their uh, firm or their employer produces. And retail trade is the most common industry or, yeah, in the United States or in Michigan. And this figure here shows that in every one of these major industries, either job growth was lower in Michigan than in the rest of the country, or job loss was higher in Michigan than in the rest of the country, as you know. The healthcare sector is booming around the world, and certainly in, in, around the nation. Healthcare jobs in Michigan, up 21%. For the rest of the nation, they were up about 29%. Post-secondary education is also a rapidly growing industry. Employment in that industry, up 23% in Michigan, up 27% in the rest of the nation. Uh, on the discouraging points are durable goods manufacturing. Michigan lost 37% of its jobs. In the rest of the nation, job loss in durable goods manufacturing was about 20%. So there's a rather discouraging picture of what is happening here. And of course, Michigan did not get very far into the construction boom that characterized many parts of the United States, a loss of 25% of the construction jobs in Michigan during the first nine years of the last decade. Also, Michigan remains concentrated in sectors that are fairly slow growing. Durable goods manufacturing accounts for 12% of the workers in Michigan, only 6% nationally. Michigan is about average with regard to medical and health services, with regard to post-secondary education, with regard to social services, which are also growing. But Michigan does not specialize in some of the sectors where there is particularly rapid growth. So the employment situation is one that we're documenting trends that I think we already know pretty well. Employment stagnation, employment decline is pretty common. I don't know what, ah, I'm see. There we go. This is employment from 2000 to 2009 in the Michigan metropolitan areas using the older metropolitan areas that we're more familiar with. 24% loss of jobs in Flint, 11% in Detroit, 12% in Benton Harbor. 
And Ann Arbor may be the only metropolitan area which had as many jobs in 2010 as it did in 2000. 